Did you know that this book that Muslims neglect today and abandon was a book the non-believers of Quraysh during the Prophet ﷺ's time really feared its effect on their hearts? They really felt it would change them? A Thalabi was a scholar of the 4th Hijra century. He compiled an entire book on stories on those who the meaning of a verse killed them. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala nabiyyihi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallama tasliman kathiran mazidan ila yawmiddin. Amma ba'd. Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran. The relationship between this blessed month and our Quran. Did you know? Did you know that this book that Muslims neglect today and abandon was a book the non-believers of Quraysh during the Prophet ﷺ's time really feared its effect on their hearts? They really felt it would change them? And they warned against it, yes, out of spite against the Prophet ﷺ and his message, but also they feared its effect. They feared it would change them. They feared it would move them just by merely listening listen to it. They were eloquent. The reason is they were eloquent masters of the Arabic language. When the Quran was recited to the non-believers of Quraysh, it penetrated their hearts. That's the non-believers. When the verses penetrated the hearts of the believers, we have authentic narrations from our Salaf that some fell unconscious and some of them fell dead. Al-Khatib al-Baghdadi, and you'll find it also in Hulyat al-Awliya, in Seerah Alam al-Nubala, in Tahdeeb al-Kamal, and also in al-Taqrib. The story of Ali ibn al-Fudayl ibn Iyad was the man who heard a verse. His father was al-Fudayl ibn Iyad, the famous worshipper scholar who died 187 years after the Hijrah. Al-Thalabi, Al-Thalabi was a scholar of the 4th Hijrah century. He compiled an entire book on stories on those who the meaning of a verse killed them. They read a verse, it hit home, they fell dead. Some of the stories in that book are exaggerated, but there are some authentic stories in there. Don't be surprised. The Quran is so strong, it kills, what are you talking about? Come on now. What are you saying, Ahmed? It's deeper than that. It crumbles mountains down. لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله. But how come I don't feel nothing? Hearts have become harder than rocks and mountains when they don't understand the Quran. ثم قصت قلوبكم من بعد ذلك فهي كالحجارة. It's so powerful that our beloved lived under the most extreme hardships, torture from Quraysh, the death of all his children before he died except one, the death of his beloved wife. The death of his uncle, companions dying, disbelievers mocking him and harming him. He didn't get no gray hair. A few surahs in the Quran gives him gray hair. Shayyabatni hudun wa akhawatuha. Hud and his sisters give me gray hair. Don't be surprised, that's what happens when you understand the meaning of the Quran. The Quran swept the tyrants of the Quraishians off their feet when they heard it in Sahih Bukhari. Ibn Abbas said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prostrated in al-Najm, Surat al-Najm. And the Muslims made sujood behind him. And the jinn made sujood behind him. And the mushrikeen made sujood behind him. What? The mushrikeen? Muslims? Okay. The jinn? Okay. Mushrikeen? After the fifth year from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam getting revelation, while tensions were mounting and they were at their peak between our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Quraysh, a time when Abu Jahl threatens the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, if I see you prostrating by the Kaaba, I'm going to step on your neck. One day the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam enters by the Kaaba. The non-believers are there meeting. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is making salah. He raises his voice in recitation. And just imagine how beautiful the Quran flows out of the blessed vocal cords of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imagine with me how mighty and dignified and humble and the words of Allah were flowing from the lips of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
You go on the internet, you see a clip of a child or a famous reciter reciting Quran, your heart trembles and you can't turn it off and you listen to it a second and a third and a fourth and a fifth time over and over again. That child reciting, that famous reciter reciting, got the Quran in a series of men over the course of 14 centuries. So just imagine with me how beautiful the Quran flows from the first man Allah revealed the Quran to. Imagine how beautiful it was from the man who listened to the Quran from Jibreel alayhi salam. وَالنَّجْمِ إِذَا هَوَى مَا ضَلَّ صَاحِبُكُمْ وَمَا غَوَى وَمَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَى He recites and he recites and then he gets to the end. أَفَمِنْ هَذَا الْحَدِيثِ تَعْجَبُونَ وَتَضْحَكُونَ وَلَا تَبْكُونَ وَأَنْتُمْ سَامِدُونَ فَاسْجُدُوا لِلَّهِ وَعْبُدُوا He went in sujood. The powerful Quran overwhelmed and swept the Quraysh off their feet. They went on down in sujood. They couldn't even control their own limbs when they heard the Quran. A few moments of Quran demolished the kufr and arrogance in the hearts of the pharaohs of this ummah. What happened? You guys were just saying, you're going to step on his neck if he prostrates, and now you're prostrating with him? Who could have believed that? That was the reason why the people who sought refuge in Abyssinia, in, in Al-Habasha, they returned to Mecca after they heard the story. The word got to them that Qurayshians made sujood. Who makes sujood but a believer? Or so they thought. The power of the Quran swept them off their feet. When they raised their heads out of sujood, the dominating effect of the Quran began to fade because they're not listening to it now. Darkness began to surge and submerge their hearts once again. They said, what did... What on earth would we, did we do? We prostrated by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa to the Lord of Muhammad. It was the strength of the Quran, the power of the Quran, the beauty of the Quran. Why were they moved and we're not moved? Because they were pioneers in the Arabic language. They were at the peak of eloquency in the Arabic language. All of them knew beyond the single, beyond any doubt when they heard the Quran that it was a miracle from Allah and only a revelation from Allah. Turn to the Quran and let it wash your inside out. Let it purify you. Let it make you a new person. Recite it and understand it. Try to read it, not looking at the next page when you're going to flip over the page. Try to understand it and contemplate it. You have one of the top tafsirs translated in English. I believe that's the biggest accomplishment in the work of translation in our time, is the tafsir of Ibn Kathir. You got some who want to sit and think they can read a verse from the Quran in English sometimes, and they want to give you their interpretation of what it means. Or they open Bukhari in English, or even in Arabic, doesn't matter. And they want to toss a hadith at you. You can bring 10 of the most eloquent people of our time and that verse, each one of them could draw a different and distinct meaning. We don't care about what all 10 says. We go to the likes of Ibn Kathir, we see what they said in it. We don't care how anyone interprets hadith, we open the likes of Fath al-Bari, the elucidation on uh, Sahih Muslim, and we open Sharh al-Nawawi, and Sharh Muslim, and we see what they said. Some think they can open Muslim without reading Sharh al Nawawi or books like that, and toss a hadith that may have been abrogated at you. The Prophet went out of his way to emphasize the reward of recitation of the Quran. We already know the deed is ten folds minimum for each letter. But look how the Prophet went out of his way to stress it. He said, if you read the Quran, you get. One deed. That deed is ten folds. Alif, lam, meme. Alif is a letter. Lam is a letter. Meme is a letter. Meaning they're not all three are not one letter. And for each one you get ten deeds. And for those three you get thirty. Look how he went out of his way to explain, to show you the reward. I calculated the reward of one who completes the Quran from cover to cover. One who starts with Al-Fatiha on page one and ends with page 604 in the memorizer's version. The one with 15 lines and ends with a period at each page. 
when you recite the entire Quran from Al Fatiha to Qul Audi Barab bin Nas, you get approximately 33 million 200,000 rewards. Did you hear that? 33 million 200,000 rewards? Take it a step further. That's on a normal day. It's worth way more than that in the month of Ramadan. Not even done there. 33 million 200,000 deeds on a normal day. When you complete the entire Quran, demolish and blow away 33 million 200,000 sins into, the, into ashes. I don't know the Quran, Shaykh, what, what can I do? I can't complete it in Ramadan. There's no verse, there's no hadith directly recommending one, two, cover the, read the Quran cover to cover. Yes, Jibreel went over the Prophet Sallallahu went over the entire Quran during the month of Ramadan. But the Salaf also recommended, the Salaf recommended that you read the entire Quran. But read any part of the Quran. That's what's important. How? How do I read? Do the short surahs count? Aren't they part of the Quran? Who doesn't know the short surahs? Who doesn't know Al-Fatiha? Read them. Read them over and over and over. Who doesn't know Surah Al-Ikhlas? Kalthum ibn al-Hadm in an authentic hadith loved Surah Al-Ikhlas so much and read it over and over that Allah told his messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam to tell him that Allah loves him. In your car, sitting, standing, laying, in your job. Read, recite it. Allah loves you for loving it. Number one, Allah loves you. Just the surah. Then the next, the surah when you recite it, you get the reward as if you read one third of the Quran. Read it three times, you get the reward as if you read the entire Quran. That's second. Then next, you read it, and it's 47 letters in Surah Al-Ikhlas. Times that by 10, 470 days on a normal, 470 deeds on a normal day. And on days like this, it's multiple folds than that. Allah loves you. You get the reward of one third of the Quran. You get over 470 deeds, and more so in Ramadan. Don't be surprised. Don't look surprised. Now you're beginning to understand the quality and attribute of al Karim. It could be one deed that tips your scale over on the judgment day. One deed. We shall set the balances of justice on the judgment day. No one will be dealt with unjustly. And if there's anything, the way, any deed, muster, weight of a muster seed, Allah will bring it. A deed equivalent to a mustard seed is a deed so small that not a scale on this universe could weigh it. The multi-million dollar scales in the high-tech labs couldn't weigh that tiny mustard seed of weight no matter how delicate their scales are. But Allah when He sets up the balances and scales on the judgment day will weigh it and will bring it and it will be accounted for. But it's not only the weight factor. The Quran is deep. Not only the deed factor. Put that aside for a second. Reciting the Quran and never abandoning its recitation is means to attain intercession of the Quran. On top of the deeds that we're talking about. One reads the Quran in this life. His sins may end up outweighing his deeds. For some sins he committed. The Quran comes to the rescue. The Quran speaks. Yes, it's going to come to your rescue. The one who made you speak in this life. Makes limbs speak in the life after. The one who made people walk in this life. On their feet. Makes others walk on their heads. On the judgment day. وَنَحْشِرُهُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ عَلَىٰ وُجُوهِهِمْ In Sahih Muslim, recite the Qur'an for on the day of the judgment day, on the day of resurrection, it will come as an intercessor for those who recite it. Those who may be in a jam. A judgment day jam. A jam of all jams. A mother and a father couldn't get you out of that one. Fasting in the Qur'an, run to your rescue and aid. This is for sinners like us. Sinners who are doing their best in recitation, but on the judgment day, their sins end up, end up outweighing their deeds. In Ahmad, Sunan ah, Musnad Ahmad, in Al-Tabarani, Al-Hakim, in authentic hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, fasting on the judgment day will say, Oh Rabb, Ya Rabb, I prevented him from food and desires, so accept intercession for him. 
The Quran comes running to you and saying, I prevented him from sleep during the night, so accept intercession for him, Ya Allah. The Prophet ﷺ then said at the end of the hadith, and they will be allowed to intercede. The Quran in fasting. In Muslim, Abu Umama reported that the Prophet ﷺ said, read, uh, read the two radiant ones, Al-Baqarah and Ali Umran. For they will come on the day of resurrection like two clouds. They will come on the judgment day like two shades. They will come on the judgment day like uh, two flocks of birds. And in another narration outside Muslim like canopies with light pleading for their companions. How can you abandon the Quran after this? Whoever turns away from my reminder, reminder here is the Quran. Verily for him is Danka. We're going to get to that word Danka. And we shall raise him up blind on the judgment day. You know what Danka is? Any type of turning from Quran falls under this ayah. Turning away in applying it. Turning away in recitation. Abu Sa'id al-Khudri. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. And Abu Huraira said the Danka in this verse means the grave will be tightened on him. A'rad an dhikri. And some scholars went on to say it's also a stressful life full of problems, anxiety and depression in this life. Don't miss out on listening. There's also immense reward in it. Immense benefits. Maybe not as much as reading it, but there's definitely great reward and great benefits in listening to it. Wallahi, from being a baby till today, May Allah grant my father a long life full of deeds. It's exceptional and rare that he's not listened to the Quran. From back in the 70s, those huge recorders in the 70s, to the vinyl records, to the 8-track tapes, to the regular tape recorders, to the CDs, and now on his iPad. When he's not listening to the Quran or teaching it, he's like a fish out of water. May Allah shine your hearts in graves and houses with the brightness of the Quran and allow it to testify for you and be an intercession for you. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa jazakumullahu khayr.